How was your real birthday? It was fun. It was a lot of fun. I saw him the next, I saw him the day after. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I don't know anything about it, so you'll have to tell me. I, I don't know that there's a lot of stuff. We went to the casino. It was yeah. a lot of, we just hung out. It was a lot and of fun. And you won all kinds of money. I won like ten dollars. I was up like ten bucks by the end of the night. But Miranda won sixty, and Isaac won fifty. Wow. Yeah, and we were all gambling on twenty bucks that my mom would give us. So they bought drinks. <laughs> all day. As soon as they both won, I was like, you're buying drinks. <laughs> they don't even see you free out there, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cheesy. Yeah. <laughs> Not even sodas? Uh... I didn't. I never asked for a soda. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Not on her 20th. Why would I ask for a soda? <laughs> Not on her 21st uh, oh. birthday. <coughs> so you just played black... Um, Slot machines, you can mm -hmm. play poker. Well, they went to the um, the casino in Anderson. Yeah, but you can play poker there. machines and blackjack machines. Miranda actually played a poker machine when she won the 60 bucks. We were just sitting at the bar. We kind of stopped gambling. But there was like a screen. There were like screens on the bar where you could play poker. Yeah. Like virtual poker. Yeah. And she was like, oh, yeah, I'll just play a game. And she got a full house. But she, she hadn't looked at like how much you won when you got stuff. And she got a full house. And then was like cool and like didn't look at how much she had won and just printed off her little thing that says how much she won and she was up 60 bucks. Just like that. Yeah. Yep. You mean she won $60 in one hand? No. Isaac won 60 or 150 bucks on one machine in one like sweet. Well remember I won over $300 on that poker machine in Vegas. Mm -hmm. It's 3 o'clock in the morning and it wouldn't quit winning. <laughs> Yeah, but it certainly wasn't one game. Or, it was one session. I mean, I think yeah. Miranda played a few times. It was like 25 bucks, a, a, you know, a play, and she just played three or four times. Yeah. So that's a way to get addicted. You mm -hmm. think you can do that every time. Mm -hmm. I need money. Let's go to the casino. We all did pretty well. None of us really expected to walk out with any money. Did your mom win? Um, I think... I don't remember if she won. I know Patrick lost like 40 bucks. Um, they didn't stay super long. They stayed a couple hours and then we stayed much longer because we had a hotel room. So we ended up maybe an hour and a half before we left. We kind of stopped gambling and just went up to the bar and we all sat at the bar and made friends with the bartender and all the people around us and just hung <laughs> out for a while. It was a lot of fun. Someone bought us a round of drinks. And you had dinner at Billy's? Uh, we, yeah, we had well, we had lunch at my grandma's, and then we went to the casino, and they had like a buffet, oh. and we did the buffet there, and they had crab legs. Ooh. Isaac and I just each ate like ten crab legs. <laughs> and this was what night of the week? It was a Sunday. Well, during that it was Easter. It was Easter Sunday. Oh, that's why they had the big, big buffet. Well, they I think well, they, they, they always have there. a buffet. They've got a, they've got a bunch of restaurants in there. There were even kids in the buffet. Like, I think the upstairs is yeah. just a bunch of restaurants and, like, anybody can go. Oh. I don't think we went up was that, the was that the one that was very smoky? Was it smoky? It, yeah. 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 Half, there's, like, a section that's non-smoking, but most of it is. And it still smells like smoke because it just drifts in. Right, yeah. yeah. If you go far enough over it, it really wasn't bad. Maybe it was just the difference of being, like, in the smoke and not completely in the smoke. I completely lost my voice by the end of the night. I didn't oh, have yeah. a voice for about a week after my birthday. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Smoke Which blew that to you? Well, I think it was partially that, but I I was sick. So that was Sunday. I was sick Thursday and Friday before that, and I started to feel better Saturday and Sunday. But I drank a lot Saturday and Sunday, and so I'm guessing that I had just started to get over my cold, and then I drank a lot, and I was in a smoky place. So I kind of felt like crap for another week. Like I just undid everything that so I'd done to feel better. So you drank before you were 21? I drank at midnight on Saturday. Oh. <laughs> we went out to the bars at midnight. The moment she was 21. Oh. Well, I saw you guys on uh, Monday, mm -hmm. and you you still didn't have much of a voice, but I thought you were feeling better at that point. You really weren't? I, I wasn't feeling great, but I was also a little bit hungover. Um, but no, I, it was, the thing is, it was for like a week and a half almost, I wasn't 
like down, like I, I wasn't like missing classes or anything. I just didn't quite feel great. Mm. I just wasn't quite there. Um, which kind of, I would almost rather be really sick for like two days. Yeah. And then be fine, but instead I was just like kind of crappy. Yeah, bad feeling. Yeah. But had to keep going. Yeah. Did you get asked for your ID? On my birthday? Yeah. There's been a couple times since then that I've not gotten ID. Uh, actually, my ID expires in like two days. I need to renew it. Does, does this change what you can do at work? Um, I can serve in the bar area now. Is basically what it changes. Does that make a difference in the tips? Sometimes, if you work like a Friday night, people will order more drinks, but you'll also get people who come and sit in the bar and don't eat. So sometimes it balances itself out because, yeah, they're ordering more drinks, but they probably aren't going to order as much food. Mm -hmm. So it kind of just depends. I had a group of guys who came in who all got, like, um, top shelf whiskey, and, like, they each got, like, two or three of them uh, last Friday, and so I made... I mean, 20, I, I didn't make as much as I should have off of them, but, you know, their bill was high enough that I made some money. So, it just depends. I could train bartend, but I'm not going to. Decided against it, huh? I mean, all the bartender, all the people I know at Scotty's who were servers and trained bartend hate it and wish they could just go back to serving. And once you train bartend, we have so few bartenders, that's all you ever get scheduled to do. They said they make less money and it's twice as stressful. Oh. Yeah. I would have well, maybe it varies from place to place because yeah. I remember that guy, I think I'm remembering this right, the guy at Bahama Breeze that, um, let's see, he wasn't, he wasn't making a choice between serving and bartending. Uh -huh. uh, he'd been there a long time, Rick. And they were having some turnover in the managers, mm -hmm. and they were at least asking him if he wanted to be a manager. And, he and make his more attitude money was, "No way! I, I, I make more money." I think if they were money. more of a bar, then you might make good money bartending. But we're not. I mean, not really. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I get the feeling that people who sit at the bar, mm -hmm. don't always tip the bartender, do they? Not always. Also, I mean, the times that you're really going to make money as a bartender are like Friday and Saturday nights, and they usually have three or four bartenders scheduled, and our bar isn't that big, because they have to make drinks for the whole restaurant, too, so you really need that many bartenders on a Friday or Saturday night. But they get tip out, but that's not really that much, and if they serve at all, most of that ends up going to taxes. Um, like my whole paycheck goes to taxes, so even if they are getting tip out, that's probably not, they probably aren't seeing that much. And they're just relying on the tips they get from the bar, which then they have to split between four people. And people sit at the bar, like, and stay. You don't get, you don't turn tables over yeah. like you do, you know, so. Is there a TV up there that they can sit and watch? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's TVs all around the Yeah, restaurant. that would be bad for... Well, there's TVs all around the restaurant, so I think that would be the same regardless. But, um, but yeah, I mean, people who sit in the dining room come to eat and leave, whereas people who come and sit at the bar stay a while, usually. Yeah, and maybe not um, consuming to the same extent. Mm -hmm. You know, they may order a drink and nurse it for hours. And an appetizer, and then that's all they do, yeah. And you used to say, I was a cheap pay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can see it might have its pros and cons. Mm -hmm. But it's not an irreversible decision. You can decide not yeah. to train to be a bartender now. and. I mean, I would year. probably train to bartend somewhere else. Just not at Scotty's. So. I like yeah. serving too much. Um, I have uh, the stuff out here for sale. Do you like avocados? Not really. No. Okay. I didn't do anything. Else. Got it all to myself. Yes. You do. No tomatoes, no avocados. Mm -hmm. So what do you like? Do you like uh, garbanzo beans on a salad? That I don't not, think we have them. Not that we have Do you any. like olives on your salad? I don't like olives. <laughs> you guys are picking all the things that I don't like, like literally avocados, tomatoes, oh, mushrooms, like mushrooms, and olives. 
cover the things that I don't like, really. So cheese, <laughs> bacon bits. Uh, I like green onions and like uh, sunflower seeds. Oh, um, and I'll put um, like regular onions. Um, Do you like uh, these french fried onions? I don't mind them, but probably not on the salad. Oh, okay. Well, put stuff out and she can take what she wants. I'm fine with what's out. I'm, I'm not picky. The only thing that, that's out is the lettuce. Out the There's bacon bits and stuff, no? Oh, yeah, there is bacon. Right now, there's more. Yeah, if I go to a salad bar, I'll usually put green peppers and onions and broccoli, yeah, cucumbers. Oh, yeah. Huh, it's surprising. I usually do. That tells you that I haven't been home much. <laughs> okay, well, uh, this lettuce in the bag is clean, so if you want more lettuce than this, okay. help yourself. And you guys can fix your salad. Are we ready to do it? Well, we are ready to do it. Okay. Stop recording. Dish up from the stove. You know what I mean? God, Emily, you are so mature, it's scary. Do your friends do this too? Yeah. Really? Yep. All the young people are like you? I wouldn't say all. I'd say, I mean, Miranda and Richie and I definitely do. Well, you guys are remarkable. Isaac. The public is in good hands. Isaac, who voted for Romney. I remember that. Is a Bernie supporter. I think Isaac had not developed his own views at no. that point. I mean, it was, that wasn't him. That was his family. Yeah. Yeah. He, he yeah. asked his grandpa who she, he should he vote for, and his grandpa told him to vote but, for Trump. But it's good now because he's adopted your views. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like what happened to grandpa once we got married. He just voted like I do. We had, um, I, Isaac is one of those people who refused to call himself a feminist because he had an, even though he was, like by definition, he was a feminist. Um, he, were, he he didn't like the word. He was like, it should be called gender equality, not feminism. And I was like, okay, but you're a feminist. Like, by definition, you are a feminist. Go ahead and just admit that. Um, and then we, in theater, or, uh, history of acting and directing last semester, we took it together. We had a lecture on feminist theater, which uh, we, we just had the same lecture in my modern theater class. My favorite lecture of the semester, I really want to take a whole class over it because feminist theater is so interesting and just talking about feminism is so interesting and like talking about the male gaze and statistics and stuff like that and um, we walked out of the lecture and Isaac goes, I think I'm a feminist. <laughs> And I was like, I know, that's what I've been trying to tell you. Good. Yeah, should have used the big plate. Well, coming back to the Bernie thing, mm, I yeah. have been pondering this and listening and reading. Mm -hmm. And there are definitely, I believe, and, and I've heard, um, some group of people who uh, see enough, hold on, how to put this, they're not going to vote for Trump ultimately, either because they decide not to or they can't, he mm -hmm. doesn't think it, um, but they see enough similarities with Bernie that they would vote, vote for Bernie. Mm -hmm. They would actually cross over from mm -hmm. Trump to Bernie. It's, I've seen a lot of that protest, too. It's a protest about not so much issues with protests. Mm -hmm. But the question is, how many would there be? And polls are not going to show you that. They really are. Not at this stage of the game anyway. Based on like real life what I'm seeing though, I think that Bernie has a better shot than Hillary does. Against Again. Trump. Um, I well, really do. I really do. Well, because people hate, hate Hillary. They hate her. Bernie is the first to tell you that that's what the polls are saying right now. But I, I don't believe polls that are that hypothetical. Yeah, and I'm not, I'm not like basing my opinion off of a lot of those polls. It's more just off of you know what I've seen. I do a lot. Normally, this is a terrible idea, but I, I read a lot of comments on news articles. Which normally would just like infuriate me because people are stupid. But I feel like it gives you a really good idea of where people are coming from. You know, when you when you read an article about something stupid 
that Trump said and you see 10 comments that are like, I'm a Republican and I'm probably voting for Bernie. It's like, okay, like these are people that I don't know completely outside of anybody that I know. They just happened to comment on this article that came up on my Facebook feed. And I feel like it might not be completely accurate. Like it's social media. It's not like an accurate poll, but it gives you an idea. Well, it gives you an idea of the thoughts mm -hmm. of people who respond, who comment on Facebook. Right. Okay. Is that representative of voters? I'm not saying it isn't. I don't think it's any know? less representative than the polls that are out right now. Hmm. The the hypothetical if 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 this then this polls. If you do you think that it's uh, more representative of just the young people, or do you think the uh, older community is weighing in on Facebook? I think everybody's weighing in on Facebook right now. I stay away from it. Well, these are the questions. There was an interesting, I guess, article I read on polling itself. It's way less accurate than it used to be, mostly mm -hmm. because of cell phones. I am. Um, and as those of us who don't answer our phone. Yeah. I think the argument against, I think the biggest argument against Bernie um, that is invalid to me is people are saying he's he has all these strong ideas but he's not going to get anything done because you've got a republican in house and senate most of the house and senate are up for re-election so saying that is saying we're not going to vote enough to actually change i mean and we're not going to get a majority but we might get enough that he can get some stuff done he might we might get enough especially if he wins the election if he were to win the election then chances are there's going to be a few Democrats who win seats in House and in, um, Congress and Senate. Yeah, the conventional wisdom is that the Senate is definitely up for grabs mm -hmm. in this election. But, but it would take a miracle to, to tip the House. The Republicans are so gerrymandered and there aren't enough of them that are up for election. So probably the House, most likely, the House would remain under Republican control, but the Senate might really tip. Well, and my other argument against that is, do you, like, I don't want somebody in office who's going to make a ton of shitty compromises. I would much rather have somebody who's going to fight for what needs to be done, make compromises when needed, but not just, like, sway to the middle to make everybody happy, because yeah. we're at a point in history where that's not what we need. Okay. How much of what Bernie stands for... I have several questions. How much of what Bernie stands for do you think Hillary supports? I think Hillary will support whatever the public wants her to support, which is arguably a politician's job, which is why I can't sit here and say Hillary is awful. Because a politician's job is to represent the public. However, I feel much more comfortable voting for somebody who has had the same views his entire career than somebody who has flip-flopped on all kinds of issues for years. Yep. Which arguably is what all politicians do, but when you have a politician who's not doing that, yeah. why wouldn't you go for someone who, like, I know what Bernie will do if he gets in office. I know what he'll fight for. I don't know that I know what Hillary will fight for. Mm -hmm. You know, right now she says she's pro-gay rights, she says she's pro-gun control, all these things. How much of that does she, is she just gonna support and how much of it is she actually gonna fight for? I don't know. You know? Well, or is, or, I mean, worst case, is she even going to stick to those? And I would argue. She has been dragged way to the left by Bernie. Yeah. And there's a lot of discussion about how far back to the center will, will she, she go? Well, and I would argue if, I mean, if we're talking about Bernie's electability, when you've got a guy who's not taking a dime of corporate money and is very close to being a front runner in the campaign. Hell yeah, he's electable. Yeah, he's electable. Like, there's no argument. Like, when someone can raise as much as a candidate who's taking huge corporate donations just from, like, individual donors, yes, he's electable. I, I just can't. Yeah, it just amazes me how much money he raises. Yeah. And people give to him over and over again. There are people who... Who 
who get one of his email appeals and they give 25 bucks. Mm -hmm. And then a month later they get another one and they give another 25. Well, if you go to his website, the first, the like opening page, it says continue to cite and on the corner is donations. And it has options. It's like 15, 20, 50, and 100. And then other amount, which means that most people who are donating to him are donating $100 or less. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, his foreign policy. I, I don't know enough about yeah, him to argue about I, I never really hear him talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, and that concerns me that, that uh, you know, what is his policy in the Middle East? What would he do? What, I think the he, biggest he, thing he, he does, he just recently voted against something that uh, was pro Israel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm thinking, okay, he's Jewish and he's voting against Israel. Mm -hmm. So where is his I policy? Think, I don't know a lot about his policy, so I'm talking about Yeah, I don't know you anybody does. Talking out of my ass right now. <laughs> well, see, here's where, where Bernie and Trump kind of agree. What Bernie has said is that, yes, he's Jewish. He spent time in Israel as a child. I don't know if he was on kibbutz or what. Uh, he has family in Israel, but he sees that the only way <coughs> to a true, <coughs> excuse me, a true two-state solution is even-handed negotiations between the Palestinians and Israel. Um, and that's what Trump got in trouble for, you know. He said, I'm not necessarily going to be pro-Israel, I'm going to try to be neutral. And doesn't that sound reasonable? I think that's what Obama has been. Well, and I think one of the things that I really like about Bernie I so he's so anti-war. And yeah. I think that when you look at, especially like the Republicans against him, and even Hillary to some extent, they're not Hillary's gonna, more hawkish than Obama. Yeah, they're not going to think twice before going to a war. You know? And like, I would really love to see someone in office who's going to make war the last resort. You know? Because yeah. we've been in war for a long time now. Well, you know, I think, of course, there are nuances, but I think we really already know the major differences between Hillary and Bernie. Mm -hmm. Bernie has a much more consistent ideological and voting record mm -hmm. than Hillary does. I mean, you can argue situations and, and um, circumstances here and there, but Bernie has pretty much been true to the to his ideas for 30 or 40 years. I mean, more there's pictures of him in college at civil rights marches, like, right. before he was even a politician. On the other hand, um, Hillary has tons more experience. She does. And she has already established a rapport with all the foreign leaders. And I know that she has a lot more experience. I don't really trust her. And to me, that's like... So even you don't trust her? Not one compared to Bernie. But I'm... I mean, this sounds kind of like a left-handed compliment, but I'm, I'm wondering if being conniving mm -hmm. isn't an asset in that job. See, but being conniving and being a woman is going to be really hard for her. And I, like, that's not a reason, I'm not saying she's a woman, she's, like, that, that's not what I'm saying at all. But the fact that people hate her and she's a woman is not helping her, you know? It's, I mean, it's hard. I probably have to hate her because she's a woman. Right, exactly. In power. I would love to see a woman in office. And I would honestly love if it was Hillary. I'd be fine with it being Hillary. I'm pretty neutral. I would be happy voting for either of them.
But in the primaries, I'm voting for Bernie. And if you're wondering who to vote for in the primaries and looking at if you're fine with either of them and looking at who needs your support more, it's Bernie. That's where I'm at. Well, every time I go to mark that ballot, Hillary, I stop, I stop. I don't do it. So I'm, that tells me I'm, maybe I'm not doing the right thing. Well, there's another kind of Super Tuesday coming up, you know. Five states on Tuesday. So that's, you know, everything I know to this point plus that is going to influence my decision. Well, there's this, this issue of all the super delegates that are voting against what their state voted for, mm -hmm. which is just frustrating. Mm -hmm. You know, like oh, there's a program on tomorrow night uh, about the uh, the way the primary election works mm -hmm. in terms of delegates, mm -hmm. and which it should, should be very eye opening. Which one? The Democrats or the Republicans? Because they're quite different. I think it might be both. It's on MSNBC. Mm -hmm. They're doing, well, maybe it's just Democrats. They're doing an in-depth thing on, on Hillary, and they're doing an in-depth depth thing on Bernie. Um, well, the superdelegates are persuadable. They are. They're just like, they're, I, I read this article, and it was like a week ago now, so I don't remember all of it, but... There's like five, there's like way too many superdelegates that are voting that have been Hillary from the beginning. Yeah. And their states were Hillary at the beginning and are now Bernie and have voted for Bernie. And they are not changing their opinion. They're like not letting themselves be persuaded. You know? And why, it's why not did just. They change? Hmm? Why do they change? They the super didn't change. They didn't change. No, That's I thought problem. you said they started. The opinion of their Hillary. state oh. changed. Oh. And they didn't. Which is a little concerning when it's happened. It's happening. Well, I know the a logic of, of what, I know the logic of what you're saying, but mm -hmm. you realize that there was there is and was never a rule that said the super delegates have to vote the way their states. It's not vote. that there's a rule. It's that so many of them are voting against it that it's making. I, I even saw a Fox report, which normally I cannot stand Fox reports, that was like this is crap. Like these super delegates, it's, I mean, like, while there is not a rule, it is their job to listen to their state. And it is their job to listen to the people and vote accordingly. While there's not a rule and they can vote however they want, this is going against the way the system was set up. And the system is flawed very clearly. But this is just like a really clear example of that of like, Bernie's winning all of these states and somehow losing because of super delegates. You know, but Hillary is quite a ways ahead in popular votes. If you sum it all up, she says she's two and a half million votes ahead. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's completely true. I think she's ahead. I don't think she's as ahead as she says she is. Um, well, I don't know. I mean, that, that's a that's a chemical thing. Yeah, that's not a poll or something. That's how many votes were cast. So she might be spinning it, but Bernie is not disputing it. So she's way ahead in the popular vote. We can say that, and that's the way a national election would go. It's not state by state. Well, mm -hmm. it sort of is with the electoral college, but yeah. Uh, the primaries are not intend, intended to be a model of de democracy no. on either side, Republicans or Democrats. Well, in Indiana, the delegates have already been chosen, even though we haven't voted. Mm -hmm. To me, that why why what's my vote going to mean? Yeah, it's on well, both the Democratic and Republican sides. Well. Um, but on the Republican side, and I, I would assume on the Democratic side, um, they are bound to the win the state's winner on the first ballot. So the people have already been chosen, and I read a lot of them are, are Trump supporters, um, and so the outcome of the election matters in terms of the first ballot at the convention. 
But then after that, you're right. But who who checks to see if they're really following the rule of first vote? <laughs> That's a good question. This whole thing is so sleazy that I can't believe that any of them follow any of the rules. No. Yeah, or would be above not following the rules. Yeah. Yeah. I've been getting really frustrated with my friends who are Bernie supporters who are just trying to convince everybody of why Hillary's awful. When at the end of the day, the argument should be Hillary would be a great candidate. However, here's why Bernie's better. Because yeah. at the end of the day, we might have to vote for either of them. And like, don't. And I, I guarantee you, all those Bernie supporters will vote for Hillary if she gets the nomination. And so, like, do why you, are you trying you to persuade so? people to hate her? I, I do think so. Yeah. They'll come out and vote. They won't just stay home. I think. I think some will stay home. I think most people I know will vote for Hillary if that's what it comes down to. Well, I sure hope so, because if if the Bernie people get so alienated that if their guy doesn't win, they just throw in the towel, well, and I, the, you can end up with President Trump. Yeah. With, the thing is, I know for a fact, the older generation, like like my mom's generation of Democrats, is super for Hillary. And like all my professors, Hillary. And so the thing is, like, I'm not... I think either of them is going to win against Trump. I really do. But... God, I hope you're right. Me too. I don't know. But it is crucial that... that um, the Ber If Hillary is the candidate, that the, a lot of the Bernie supporters come over. I was... Uh, <clears throat> I heard something just within the last day or two that at this point in the campaign in, tw in 2008, um, it was much closer between Obama and Hillary in terms of delegate count. But Hillary much was closer. ahead. Um, yeah, she was. Yeah. At this point? Yep. Hillary was ahead. Uh -huh. um, but the thing that struck me was uh, there was, um, I guess, a poll of Obama supporters. Mm -hmm. Or Hillary. Well, one or the other. Who said that they said that 70% of them would not vote for the other candidate or would just stay home. They wouldn't and it vote for a black person. They'd stay and home it turned first. out that basically 80% of them did. So they went from 70% saying, no way am I going to vote for that guy or for that woman, whichever yeah. way it went, to a complete reversal where 80% of them got on board. Well, and the other side wasn't Trump. You know, I think if, if Trump if, makes it even worse. If nothing else, the fact that Trump could be the other candidate is gonna make people go vote. Like even if they're not super for Hillary, everybody who's for Bernie is so against Trump that I think they'll vote for Hillary. I think. Well, I hope so, but they could they could have the attitude that we wanted Bernie so badly mm -hmm. that now the whole thing is broken. We don't care. I yeah. I don't think that's true for that. I, I hope not. I, I, I was playing cards with some women on the street and then also uh, was out at breakfast with some of them. And I had the courage to bring up politics. Oh no. <laughs> and the consensus was they don't like any of the Republican candidates and they don't know what they're going to do. And, and I got the feeling that rather than have to make a choice, <coughs> they're going to stay home. <laughs> They can't vote for a Democrat. Right. Apparently, so. Which honestly might work to our benefit. Well, sure. Yeah, I'm, of course, very concerned about the, the presidency, but I'm also really concerned about all the down-ballot tickets. Mm -hmm. Because that's how you flip the Senate. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't, you don't flip the Senate by not voting if for they don't, anyone. If you don't yeah. flip the Senate, Bernie will get nothing done. Yeah. Hillary at least has worked with some of these people. Though they hate her, they... She has worked with them. Well, I do think a lot of Bernie's uh, policies are pie in the sky. But the thing about him is, you know which direction he would push. Mm -hmm. And that could be just as good. I would love to see Bernie and Hillary run together. Yeah. Because with Hillary as vice president working with the Senate... 
but all she the pundits are all the pundits. Are I don't saying, think she will either. All the pundits are saying that neither one would pick the other for me. Yeah, I don't think so either. There was some speculation that Hillary might pick Elizabeth Warren. That would be amazing. No, I don't think she will. Well, she has the same ideals as Bernie. Yeah, but uh, she's not Bernie. I mean, I think uh, as much as I would love to have a woman in the office, having two women in the office, great. Wouldn't that be And sad? I love Elizabeth Whoa. Warren. I'm have you ever seen Elizabeth Warren's tweets? No. She is savage on Twitter. I mean, like, oh, she yeah. has the best. I, I don't have a Twitter. I've only seen, like, screenshots that get shared. But <clears throat> she is very real on Twitter and just, like, calls people out on their crap. <laughs> and it's great. <laughs> it's so great. I am afraid. I really like her. I'm afraid that uh, two women on the ballot, there would just be too many chauvinists. But how that. how many men feel like they can be the underling to Hillary? I think Democrats could. I think I think there are male Democrats that could. I think the best choice. Th there was an article I just read someplace, maybe in the. You could that Rondell. And they were, they were talking about uh, Hillary's possible picks for me. And uh, some of them are people you never heard of. Well, well, one was Elizabeth Warren was a possibility. But I think uh, maybe the most probable, and the one I'd really like to see is uh, Castro. Well, well, yeah. Which one is it? Is it Julio I'm or sure. Joaquin? I don't know. They're both great. Which, um, which, uh, the one that's HUD secretary. <clears throat> One's was ex-mayor of San Antonio, and the other's now HUD secretary, and I can't tell them. I'm not sure they can. But anyway, <coughs> I think that would be cool. One, a Hispanic. Two, a Hispanic named Castro. Mm -hmm. And he's a sharp guy, Stanford grad. I feel <laughs> like there's something, uh, is like having a woman in office is super progressive. I think having a Jew in office is really progressive, too, because I feel like it, it's, it's not so far away from Christianity that the Christians are going to panic. But it's far enough away that it opens the door for other religions to be in office. Yes, yeah. yeah. And I think that's almost as important as having a woman. Well, it would office. be it would be historic either way. Yeah. Woman or Jew. Yeah. I've learned a lot because the show I'm assistant directing next semester is. Have I told you guys about it? I no. read about. It. Um, it's called Parade. It's about it's 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 a true story uh, about this guy named Leo Frank who was a Jew living in the South in the early 1900s, and there was a ton of prejudice against Jewish people, like. People were like terrified of Jews, and um, he moved to the South for a job that he was offered. He moved from New York, I believe, um, and he, this little girl, was raped and murdered in the town, and he didn't do it, but everybody blamed him. Like everybody turned well, straight to him. It, it was in the basement of his building. It was, I in, it was he, in the basement owned, of. He the, owned the pencil factory. It right? was in the basement of the pencil factory. He didn't own it, but he was like one of the head guys. Um, I think it was his wife's uncle owned the factory, and that's why he moved, and that's why he married his wife. Mm -hmm. Was because his wife's uncle offered him this job, so he moved to Georgia and married this woman. Um, who's also Jewish, but Southern, so it's not, there wasn't as much preju prejudice against her. And um, this little girl got raped and murdered in the basement of his factory, and they all turned to him, and in the end, he was, he was deemed not guilty, but the, mm -hmm. but the town was so furious that they lynched him. Now, what the Wikipedia article says is that he was sentenced to death in the trial in Georgia. He was sentenced to death and, and the mayor came was, out. And that was later, I think the governor commuted it to life in prison. Yeah. And because of that commutation, he was transferred to a different prison. Mm -hmm. And when he got there, so this was a different town. Yeah. When he got there, the people were upset. They kidnapped him out of the prison. Basically, that's it. Basically, he was never like deemed innocent, but the guy No, who, he was convicted. The guy, he was, he was convicted and sentenced to death because of this guy's story, this guy who was a worker, like the night worker in his mm -hmm. factory, mm -hmm. and like claimed all these things that were very not true mm -hmm. about Leo Frank. And then um, he said, this guy said that he like saw Leo kill the girl and like Leo made him like carry the body after mm -hmm. she was already dead down in the basement. And then the uh, coroner's report f found that there was sawdust in the girl's lungs. 
which meant that she was alive in the basement, which like brought up all these questions about this guy's testimony and basically slowly unraveled that this guy's testimony testimony was not true in a lot of ways. And the governor came out and said, we're moving Leo to a different prison. I've changed it from death to life in prison. My guess is that had this, what's interesting too is the town he was moved to is the town where the little girl was born and had just recently moved from. So he was actually hung in this little girl's hometown. Oh yeah. Um, so my guess is that there were so many holes in this guy's testimony, they probably would have in investigated it further and figured out who actually did it had this mob not just like kidnapped him and lynched him. And had there been DNA evidence in those days, yeah. it probably wouldn't have even come to trial. Mm -mm. Have you directed uh, assistant directed enough that you now have more responsibility? Um, I'm going to have a lot more responsibility because I'm a senior and the other assistant director is going to be a sophomore. Um, the issue is I've never assistant directed a musical. So the director, her name is Beth. She's really fun. However, I'm, it's taken some getting used to. She's a really good personality. Um, and she calls everybody sweetie. <laughs> which I just don't really do well with. Like, to me, sweetie is very demeaning. Yeah. And she calls everybody this, and I know that it's not demeaning, but it's really taking some getting used to. Yeah, I agree with you. And it makes me feel like she doesn't have a whole lot of respect for me. Um, and especially coming from working with Karen, I think that Beth will probably give me more responsibility, but I don't think that she respects me as much as an artist. If that makes sense. I Because it's because what from what I've heard, she does give her assistant directors a lot of response she'll like just say hey go block the scene you know she gives them responsibility but I've also heard that she's notorious for watching what the assistant directors did and completely changing it mm -hmm. and I think she just likes to make them feel like they have some responsibility which rubs me the wrong way a little bit um, but I've never worked on a musical working with her is gonna be an interesting experience it'll be fine um, I after well and this is the real world uh -huh. I mean, there's all kinds of different flavors. There of is, yeah. Personalities and jerks and nice people. Does this mean that your capstone is going to be in the spring? Probably. Um, I got to talk to. I, I've, have I told you guys I'm teaming up with one of my friends? She's going to dramaturg and act in whatever show we do as her honors thesis. And it's going to be my capstone. So we're going to kind of team up and do it. We're trying to find an all women show. Um, we haven't found anything yet. But she got cast in the first show of the semester. And my show opens a week after that, which means theoretically we have the entire second half of first semester. So we could either do it at the end of first semester or we could do it in the spring yeah. or start rehearsals in the fall and then, you know, do that. My guess is the show is going to be in the spring. We just might start stuff in the fall. Um, we've got to find a play first, though, and kind of figure out who's available uh, based on that. So, so you ditched the one that was in the school locker room? Well, yeah, because I have my friend, uh, the, the theater I'm working for this summer is doing it, and I have a friend who's in it, so I just, I, I want to find a play that I don't have any prior, like, ideas about, I don't want to see the show and oh, then yeah. try to yeah. replicate, you know, I, I want to go into something that I don't have any previous ideas about, I, uh, I have a few plays that I need to read and haven't yet, um, I just haven't had time to read them, but we'll see. Oh, Isaac got cast as the ghost of Christmas present in A Christmas Carol. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Where? Yeah, at Ball State. It's oh. our, it, we do A Christmas Carol in our season every three years or so. The ghost of Christmas present. Present. He's the one who's like real jolly. He's kind of like Santa. And uh, put Scrooge together with Tiny Tim where Scrooge uh, donates whatever. Is that the one? Or no, that's after all yeah, the ghosts. Seen this mm -hmm. for a long time. That's after all the ghosts. So the Ghost of Christmas Past um, shows oh. shows him like his childhood. Yeah. The Ghost of Christmas Present shows him uh, his employee Bob Cratchit shows him his house and what a great Christmas they're having, and they're kind of like crap talking Scrooge and talking about how he's such an awful person, and he and then the Ghost of Christmas Future shows him like what people think of him after he's dead. Oh yeah. And so, and Tiny Tim's like dead and stuff. And so the Ghost of Christmas Present is actually one of the bigger chunks. It's, it's the biggest role of the three ghosts, really. Um, and he's supposed to be like real, he's, he's described as, he's basically described as being like Santa. So he's, he's very jolly and, you know, 
He's supposed to be like a bigger guy. Oh, I'll have to go see that one. Is, uh, is Isaac uh, pleased with this? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's really excited about it. Yeah. Are you wearing a Fitbit? It's a Garmin. Okay. Same kind of thing, except you can take showers with it and ah, swim with it. And, interesting. Yeah. yeah. And, and you're supposed is, to walk. My first goal was something like 7,000 steps. It's, it's demoted me to about 4,000. <laughs> I bet I could get in a lot of steps if I wore one of those when I was working. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. God, yes. I was doing fine until I went to California, and I couldn't budge Linda out of the house. Mm -hmm. Kept saying, let's go for a walk. No. No answer. <laughs> So are we ready for the ice cream course, or is there something in between? No, just ice cream. What if we played a hand of cards and then, then ate yeah, ice cream? Good idea. I'm full. Hey, but we haven't heard anything about what uh, your summer's going to be like. You're going to... What have I not told you? You are well, going to... Well, the whole to, thing. Well, it was kind you of... You got the internship. In, in about mm -hmm. two seconds on the phone. Um... But yeah, I mean, I, I didn't learn anything that I, I didn't already know. I mean, it's um, it's going to be 25 to 30 hours a week. Um, it's very much not like Monday through Friday. I kind of make my schedule every week. And then the show that I'm assistant directing with my friends is 7 to 10, Sunday through Thursday. Which is a different thing, not Which the is, same. So yeah. the internship is with a theater company? Is that what you would call it? That's what it is. That's what it is. Okay. And so they put on things for money. They're trying to make money doing this, right? Yeah, they're an established theater company, yeah. Are oh, they making money? Around? Yeah. Um, actually, Karen, my uh, advisor, helped start it. I don't remember exactly how long they've been around, um, but they're growing significantly right now. And they have a show that actually closes in May, and so what a lot, and they, their next show doesn't open until August. So a lot of what I'm going to be doing is like marketing and like helping them. They have a big gala in uh, June that they, it's like a big fundraiser. So planning for that and then helping with marketing and stuff and auditions for their shows in August. They're doing... Um, so, so the show that closes in May is on now? Uh, preview started this week. The official opening is next week I think. So any involvement that you would have in that would be administrative kind of stuff. Not, yeah I probably won't creative. be very involved in that. I'm yeah. gonna see it definitely but I probably won't be involved in it at all. Um, they're doing a show though in uh, the auditions are in August. I won't be around for the show but I'll be around for like getting ready for it called Body Politics which is like three plays. I don't know a ton about it but what I know about it is it's three plays and they all explore the ways in which government tries to make women's bodies subject to politics. And so like things, you know, as big as like abortion to things that aren't quite as talked, aren't talked about as much. Um, and just like the way that all of that has become part of politics, which should be really interesting. Should be interesting. Mm -hmm. So how do you, how do you define assistant directing in that, that, uh, I'm not assistant director. She's oh, an intern. I thought, I thought the, the goose And interns get all of the crappy I am there. There. That's not Rivendell. That's not where I'm Oh, training. okay. No. Okay, so tell us about the assistant directing thing. Uh, it's just a theater company that a bunch of my friends started. We actually did, um, uh, the guy who directed Stryker last year, Yeah. we did it under that theater company's name. So technically that was kind of the first show that Blue Goose did. Is that did. Brent? Brent, right. yeah. Okay. Um, is this the one whose dad is wealthy and, and wanted to put up the money for him to get started? I think that's somebody else. I don't know who oh, that is. Okay. No, um, no, Brent and, uh, Brent and Jess, who's his fiance, um, and my friends Evan and Angie and Jackie all started this theater company and this is their first real show that they're doing and so Brent is directing it um, Angie and Jackie and Jess and Evan and my friend Zach are all in it Evan and Zach are the guys that I'm staying with in May um, they're all in it along with some people that I don't know um, there's some professional actors there's some people who go to Northwestern um, most of the designers are Ball State alum from the last few years, so I know most everybody. Um, but this is their first big production with this theater company, and my goal, they're already in rehearsals. They started rehearsals, like, uh, two weeks ago, I think. Um, so I'm coming in kind of late. But it opens in July. 
Um, my goal is to get in with everybody enough and just kind of make it known that when I move out there next year, I'm very interested in helping them start up the company. Um, and I, it's it's unpaid. I mean, so I my that guess as a is that your employer. Well, you employer is a hard thing to say because they're not going to make any money for a long time. Um, and I would be more interested in being on their board of directors, helping them start things up than just like working for them. Um, I would work for them if that's what they wanted, but I am very interested in being on their board of directors. Um, and I mean, this is this show is unpaid. My guess is that if they make any profits on ticket sales, we'll get a little bit of it, but that might mean that someone throws me 20 bucks at the end of this process. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, it's not actually, and there's 10 actors too, and they'll get paid before I would. Sure. Um, so, and their yeah. their job description says unpaid, so it's really just. So these people, they must have day jobs to keep them going. They're oh, in yeah. Chicago already. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's a tough way to go. And your internship yeah. is not paid either. So you're going to have to have a day job, or you're going to have to have money. We'll see. My my plan, I from what I talked to mom about, because we talked through this. My plan is the first few weeks to not even try to have a job. Because my internship is 25 to 30 hours a week, yeah. which is a lot on top of 7 to 10 rehearsals every night. So a traditional job is just not going to fit into my schedule. 7 to 10 rehearsals every night? From 7 to oh, 10. Oh, from 7 to 10. That's yeah. That's a strange thing, way to do a play. Uh, no. Um, so, <clears throat> I mean, like... You know, it's like a serving job. You have to give up half your day for a serving shift. You just do. There's no, like, you get off at five. Like, no, you don't know when you're going to get off for a serving. Like, I'm not going to be able to get a serving job. I'm already asking Rivendell to be really flexible with my show that I'm assistant directing because those are two completely separate things. Um, I, I, I can't really ask them to be flexible with a job, too. Um, my goal is to talk to Brent because I know when he first moved there, he did a lot of, like, website editing and like things like that that wasn't a lot of money but if he could do like five of them in a day he might make 40 bucks mm -hmm. you know and so see what kind of stuff he did along those lines um and if nothing else i'm just going to be really broke all summer and come back and you know get my refund pretty quickly and be okay but i'm gonna i'm gonna try to pay both months of my rent Pretty quickly. Well, I, you saw I transferred that money. Yeah, I did. Thank you. Um, and if I, I should find out next weekend if I get the scholarship, and if I get the scholarship, I might ask for another five hundred or so. Because if I get the scholarship, then I'm not going to need. Oh, we talked about this. I'm not going to need as much money from the account next semester. So um, I might take some of that. Okay. Well, I got something else to ask you though. Mm -hmm. There is um, enough money that your dad left uh, for. Um, I don't know it's two or three more months. Okay. So last summer we, you didn't use that money. I'm going to need that money. This that's summer. what I wanted to know. Yeah. Wanted this summer away. Wait till next fall. What I might do, if you're okay with it, is if you could just like, um, before I leave in two weeks, if I could just have all of it, is that possible? And then I can just put it in my budget for the summer because otherwise you're going to have to mail me checks to Chicago, and that doesn't, you know. I. <laughs> When I did the scholarship. Is this the $75 a month? Yeah. yeah. Which you didn't take last summer. Right. Right. So that would be 225 bucks. Yeah. I think that's what left in there. Mm -hmm. It's two or three. I'm not sure which. Um, but, um, oh, when I went to um, transfer the scholarship money, I thought, you know, you're not going to be there when the check comes. It takes about a month, he said, for the check to... It last, only takes 10 days to get to the school. Last semester, it never came to me. It went straight to the school. So whatever address you sent it to last semester was right. Okay, that's the one I used this okay. time. But I tried <laughs> because I wanted the check not to be coming to your house, ultimately. Mm -hmm. um, I tried having the address be here, mm -hmm. but it changed the tax uh, oh, and having the check come here would be worse than having it come to my house. I mean, there. Then I would have to come here to pick up the check. Oh no, and I'm go saying back to I mail it to you. Well, that doesn't. I mean, I have to. I have to give the check to the school. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I can't just. I can't just cash the check. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. the, I mean, the check is addressed to the school. Huh? 
Yeah. So hopefully that check comes, if it does come to my house, hopefully it comes before I leave. Yeah. Um, Are is Richie and his friend going to be there this summer? Yeah, they're both going to be there. If nothing else, if it doesn't come, I'll drive back to Muncie for a day and deposit it through the school. Um, hopefully it comes, though. Hopefully it won't be an issue. Well, I think it's going to go directly to the school for two to keep children going to put on their bursar. Mm -hmm. And I do. Yeah. I think that shouldn't be fine. And what I had to do last time is just keep an eye on my account because what they'll do, because it's towards the end of the semester, is they'll hold on to it and not refund it to me, thinking that I want to use it for next semester. So I'll call them and say, hey, I want this refunded. And I have direct deposit. So they'll just deposit it straight into my bank account. Oh, from I, see, I don't know what happens with the other ones yeah. at all. Yeah, they just they put it in my account as if it were going to pay for tuition, and I call them and say, actually, I want that money refunded. And then they just put it in my account. Last time I called them, and it was in my account within like two days. Yeah. So. The message that I got was, this is not money that's being used for educational expenses. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I better get out of here. What message? The message when I tried to have the check sent here. Oh. Um, was it's not being used for educational expenses. Well, that's fine. I think sending it to my house is more practical anyway. Well, it has to go through the school, so it has to, yeah. has to go to Ball State. Even when the check comes to my house, I still have to take it to the bursar office. And they have to process it. I have no idea that you couldn't just cash the check. Mm -mm. No, I can't. Because it's written to Ball State. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll have to pay attention to that toward the end of next year. Mm -hmm. Speaking of money, did you get any notice from FAFSA? Uh, Remember they said there would be Yeah, I got money? a notice that said they have everything they need. Uh, they'll be giving out financial aid awards in June or July. So, okay. we're good. Yeah, I think that's what was expected. Mm -hmm. Not not the awards or the monetary amounts themselves, but just that everything was good. Yeah. Good. Well, I mean, if you did okay last year, you're going to do at least that well yeah. this year, or maybe better, yeah. because your dad's income was a third of what it was. Yeah. My thought for the end of next year is that maybe you transfer the money mid to end of March. Just so that we're sure it's going to get processed through before I graduate. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll just my, my I was talking to mom today. I think my plan for next year is to stay in Muncie for the summer because I'm still going to have a lease. Uh, keep working at Scotty's. Just save up a bunch of money and then try to move in August. That's also dependent upon Miranda's financial situation. So if Miranda needs to go home, live at home for six months and spend money or and save up money, I'll probably go home for six months. And save up money because she and I are going to live together, so really we're kind of dependent upon each other's schedules. I'm not going to move out there without her. I can't afford to move out there without her. So. Oh, you can't um, find some of these other kids to live with. I mean, I could, but I'm going to. I mean, Miranda and I are moving out there together, and so I would hate to sign a year lease when she only needs a couple more months to raise money. Or you can keep your job with Scotty's and just uh, commute from here. Yeah. I well, yeah, I could. I could also transfer to the Indy Scotty's where I would make more money. Oh. Yeah, I've sure, heard there's one downtown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We've been to it. It's much huge. bigger. Mm -hmm. I've heard that they make a lot huge. more money. Huge, huge. <laughs> See, that's one thing really positive for me that's come out of this campaign. The word huge. <laughs> <laughs> I love the word. Oh. He's such an asshole. So, so, well, you know, I think that's actually Bernie's word. No, if he Bernie took it from Trump. He started mocking him with that word. I'm not sure about that. I because I think that's Bernie's Brooklyn accent. Huge. I uh, no, I think it was Trump. Well, whoever I still. I love mean, it. Trump just overemphasized everything. Well, of course he does. One hundred percent. Believe me. <laughs> So you want to play cards and let dinner settle? Sure. Let's. Can I grab another glass of wine? Yeah. It's. Do you really want to know what you're drinking? Is it Francia?
It's in the closet. Believe it or not, I don't drink Franzia. I may drink cheap alcohol, but I don't drink Franzia. I well, usually drink like barefoot, or you can get these like gallons of sangria for 12 bucks. We do that a lot. Well, I only drink this, you know, for medicinal purposes. Oh, I'm sure. No, seriously, I have a glass uh, almost every night before I go to bed. You know, the old red wine is good for your heart thing. Mm -hmm. So, that's why I do it. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to buy, uh, I'm not going to spend money on expensive wine when I drink it that way, you know, so. Expensive wine is yummier. You know, I'm not enough of a connoisseur that I can really tell the difference. I, mean, I don't know why I'm talking, I don't drink expensive wine either. <laughs> I appreciate mom's expensive wine when I go home. <laughs> I, I guess, I guess I like better wine better, but I don't dislike cheap wine. Yeah. So why drink? You know. Yes. Mom's boss is. I think he's a millionaire. I think I think he has that much money. Um, he uh, buys her. He'll just like buy her bottles of wine sometimes. So she always has a bunch of really nice. He'll just find like labels on wine. He's like, this made me think of you, so I bought you this wine. And he'll just like buy her a bottle of wine. Don't know anything about the wine? The no, he doesn't know anything. Because there, there was one that was called like Freak Show that had this really cool like circus art on it. And mom did some research and found out it was a really expensive bottle of wine. But he doesn't really think about money because he's loaded. So he just like found a cool bottle of wine and gave it to her. Well, she's that's interesting. That's interesting yeah. because the packaging of premium wine. Uh -huh. can be a very lucrative adventure. Yeah. Uh, one of the guys that co-founded Landsmont with us ended up uh, in a consulting company and their clients were mostly vineyards. Mm -hmm. So there's a saying, this is for premium wines, not for this crap. Yeah. But there's a saying, the package sells the first bottle, mm -hmm. the wine sells, sells the, the second. second bottle. That, I believe that. I absolutely believe that. I mean, well, I... You're, I've Mary, gotten Mary's bottles of wine. Is living proof. I've gotten bottles of wine that just like have a funny name, and I'm like trying to decide, and I'm like, well, this one seems funny, let's get it, you know. And then because there's this Aldi wine that's called like Fancy Chicken, or it's 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 not that, but it's something stupid like that. That's super cheap. That I bought once just because I was like, this is silly, you know. I'm buying wine, why not buy something silly? I think I've heard of that. And then I, I get it all the time now, because yeah. it's like three bucks an hour. Well, you know, there is an app. No. There is an app that you take a picture of the label, and very quickly it returns you all the information on the wine. Yeah. You know, like if it's won awards, or if it's crap, or... Yeah. And how much it should cost. Yeah. Maria and I start, because Maria likes real sweet wine, yeah. and I like real, like, dark reds. Um... So we've started, we've found out that sangria is kind of our middle, middle ground. Yeah. Um, because it's sweet enough for her, but it's not like grape juice, you know. She would drink grape juice wine if she could. Um, so we've started, like, every now and then there's these gallons of sangria that you can get. They got, like, a big handle, and we'll just split the price of it. It's 12 bucks, super cheap. We'll just split the price of it, and it lasts us for a couple weeks. Cause we just have a glass with, like, dinner every now and then. And that's most of what I drink now, just because she and I tend to buy wine together. Does she know where she goes to teach it? Not yet. Her top two choices, and she'll probably get one of them, are going to be Muncie and Jay County. Which means hopefully she'll be able to stay with me and live in the apartment, and we won't have an issue of me having to pay more. So Andy is out of it now. Andy's going to be her third choice. Um, but just financially, it makes more sense for her to stay close to Muncie. And also, recently, she's realized that if, if she student teaches too far away, that means she only has a semester left at Ball State. Because she only has a semester left of classes, and then she student teaches. And I just don't think she's ready to leave everybody yet. And she's got Reflex. She's going to be a leader of Reflex next year. And she's not really going to be able to take that responsibility if she's leaving. I can't imagine her as a community. Is that is that the improv group? Right, yeah. Yeah, that's a side of Miranda I'd I like to see. <laughs> she seems far too quiet and reserved for that. But she's not quite reserved. <laughs> that's what you tell me. She's just a dork. I don't know. She. 
She's just a dork. Well, I'm, we, we were talking about it because I was talking to her about how, like, you guys are always, you, get, how you have said to me a few times that you just, like, don't see her as an improviser just because of how you met her. And we were talking, I think when she, when you had dinner with me and her and Isaac, she came out of her shell a little bit. A little bit more. And, yeah. like, now you see how they can go back and forth a little bit and, like, maybe not to the extent yeah, which they the normally do. the first time I really talked with her at all was when you two came down... Was it your 19th, 20th birthday? Probably, yeah. And she was very quiet and yeah. reserved. Yeah. But yes, I did see her coming out of her shell a little bit. Yeah, especially still, when, she, when not, she and Isaac are together, they, they banter, you oh. know. Because they, I mean, they improv together, so that's <laughs> kind of just what they do. Hey, There's, um, about Isaac. Yeah. You know, he still owes us $200 for the car. Yeah. And I, he was, knows. I wondered if... if I, run this by you first before mm -hmm. I ask him. But we want want to put it on a deck or extend the patio or something, mm -hmm. which means some of the plants might need moving. Mm -hmm. You think he'd be interested in doing yard work, just work off the two hundred dollars? He probably would. I, I think that when would he do it though? Is he going he to does have, I'll I'll run it by him. He he leaves for Connecticut on the sixteenth. Which means yeah, he got an internship in Connecticut. Oh, no. email. He's, he's doing um, a Shakespeare festival out there. He's got this really, really awesome internship. He's going to be in Connecticut. Uh, they, they perform in Connecticut, but they rehearse in New York City. And he oh. figured out the place that they rehearse is a block and a half away from Times Square. Oh, my gosh. Where is he staying? Um, he's staying with um, one, of, one of the people that works there is letting him stay with them. Okay, because so when we talked housing. about this, he didn't have a place to stay. Yeah, so he, he spent a while trying to figure so that out. Mom's not, mom's not going to be ready to have anything done. I mean, no. by the He's good for okay. these two Because yeah. I was going to say, he's got a week between when school ends and when he leaves. I'm sure when he gets back, he would be interested in that. But I think he, he gets back like mid-July. Well, that could work. He that gets, might work because I'm going to be gone most of June. Okay, um, I'll talk to him. Okay. I'll run by him. I'm sure he would. I'm sure he would do that. He likes. I he likes working with somebody out. because we can't do. Yeah, I mean, and since he owes you guys money, you know, we're not paying him obviously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll talk to him. I'm sure he. I'm sure he would be up for that. He, yeah, he did landscaping all last summer. Yeah. 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 Landscaping job. He really liked it. He didn't like the management. And they were really, the hours. they were really not flexible with his hours and stuff like that. But he likes, I mean, he likes working outside. So. Working in the dirt. Yeah, it's it's hard since we don't know very many people, and everybody here's old. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to figure out who you would reach out to to get things done. Yeah. Like that. Well, I'm sure even if uh, even if it came down to like. I'm sure he would do it regardless, even if he was like, I'd rather just pay them the two hundred dollars and then make some money doing it. You know, I'm sure that he would do it. I don't see why not. He and Marina are actually in Chicago this weekend. They, their improv uh, troupe is in a national tournament. I don't think they're doing very well, from what I've heard. But they went to regionals, just like four of them, not all of them, because it was a last minute decision. They were like, let's go to this competition. Why not? Not thinking they were going to win, just kind of going to have fun. Um, the two seniors on the team and the two freshmen on the team actually went. Everybody else was busy that weekend, so nobody else went. And they won regionals. And I think it's because they went in with this attitude of, like, we're just going to have fun. We're not here to win. Yeah, they were, we're probably winning. real loose. Yeah, yeah, and so they won, and so they got to go to nationals. So the four people who competed are the, were the only people who can compete at nationals because they were the only ones who competed at regionals. But they took Maria and Isaac because they both have been in reflex for three years, and they're going to be the leaders next year. So they went as well, just to like be supportive and hang out. Oh, but not actually performing? They couldn't perform because they didn't perform at regionals. Oh. Um, oh. So they went and I, I asked Isaac, basically there's like four rounds with all different teams competing in each round. The winner from each round competes in a final round. So you have four teams competing. Uh, on my way here, Isaac texted me and said the first round just ended and that they didn't do very well. My guess is the reason they did so well in the first place is because they were relaxed. Yeah. And I'm not surprised that they didn't do as well because they were probably overthinking it. <clears throat> so. This is exciting to watch your kids, you know, see where you're going with your lives. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, um, I've got some instant potatoes. No? I hate instant potatoes. <laughs> Even well, with that gravy on them? Yeah. We also have a huge, like, gallon bag of potato flakes at my house because Miranda eats them. 
So we've got some. We've got plenty. Well, do you want me to send some meatballs home then or not? Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll take that. <clears throat> I'll take the meatballs, yeah, for sure. Okay. Sorry, I just, I can't do instant mashed potatoes. <laughs> well, if I put gravy on them, they're okay. Really? Yeah. It's, a, it's a texture thing for me. They're just, I don't know. I don't like them. You're too picky. I guess when you have to do the cooking, the fatty. You like well, there. I, I do the cooking too. <laughs> what do you think I do? Uh, it's easier to like the crappy stuff. I just don't eat mashed potatoes. <laughs> want to keep enough for Grandpa and I. For a I might as well just eat the rest of the stuff. Yes, uh, yes, do. Uncle Frank cooks are good for you. How many meatballs do you usually eat, though? Um, four, five. That's probably too many. Five, four. Okay. Why are you planning the next meal? Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna send the rest of it home with her. But one meal, I'll keep one meal for us. Four. Okay. That sounds pretty good. Good. has another year here, right? Yeah. We're gonna we're graduating at the same time. He got held back. <laughs> what does he gonna want to do when he gets out? Um his plan? his plan is Chicago is still is that still on? No. The light's still on. It's not on. Oh it is on. <laughs> I misspoke. Um, he wants to do, go to Chicago. He's he's kind of talking about grad school. Um, he's he's playing. I don't know that that's for sure his goal, but he definitely wants to do Shakespeare. He definitely wants to act. Are you going to record our whole card game? No. Okay. That would be silly. Yeah, I I texted you while you were in. Uh, I think I did, or did I write this to Kenny? No, while you were in California, that that um, Isaac had this internship, and I. I, didn't I say who knew that Isaac would be a Shakespeare freak? Not to me. He oh. loves Shakespeare. That's just nuts. I don't think he's going to try to do improv at all anymore. I'm going to go to the restroom before From we improv comes. to Shakespeare. He, I talked to him about it, and he's, like, he's always loved acting, but, you know, we were talking about it, I was like, so you don't want to do improv at all? And he was like, honestly, I think the reason I've always loved improv is it's easy. He was like, Shakespeare isn't easy. Right. He's like, I don't want to do something that is just easy. You know, so I think he'll probably still try to do improv, but I think he loves the work that Shakespeare takes and the analysis and, you know, all of that. I think he grows more as a person if he does that. Yeah, I think so too. It's kind of a small market, isn't it? Not really. Oh, I mean, no. there's, there's several Shakespeare theaters in Chicago. He's, he's been around <laughs> for a lot longer than we have. Well, I just mean commercially as a money. Oh, Emily. Yeah. Well, Grandma's cleaning up. Sit down so you're on camera. Oh, I guess I didn't turn it off. But I know one thing that your dad would want to hear about is uh, Alias Grace. That happened. That happened since the last video, right? No. Alias Grace closed three weeks. Well, Alias Grace had closed I think you by were... the time. Huh? Yeah. Alias Grace opened at the very beginning of February. There was one of these videos we did where you were in rehearsal or starting rehearsals for something. Was that? It was probably Alias Grace and it was probably around Christmas. <coughs> so you think we've got the Alias Grace discussion on a video someplace? I think so. You sure? Yeah. You don't want to talk about it? Anymore? I know that it had happened when we did the last video, so surely we talked about it. Mm -hmm. Okay.